Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of On The Beat. I'm Tony Olivero here with my fellow basketball beat writers, Andrew John and Brett Logerardo, recapping uh, Syracuse's Legend Classic win this weekend uh, in Atlantic City at the Boardwalk Hall, uh, winning the championship over Georgia Tech in the, in the uh, final game, and also previewing uh, tomorrow night, they're going to have a quick turnaround as Cornell, last year's Sweet 16 team, who was a Cinderella here and carried home just a few months ago, uh, will be returning, albeit with a much different team. But first things first, this weekend Syracuse was ranked number nine, um, defeated a Big Ten team in Michigan, and, uh, and a solid uh, ACC team in Georgia Tech. Both teams brought to the table different things that Coach Bayheim felt SU learned from. Um, but overall, uh, I guess first thing to touch on is, before the weekend, Coach Bayheim said it would be the first true test of the season. Um, and after the and after the end of the, the weekend, he felt that uh, they did pass the test and that they did enough and that they showed um, what he needed to what he needed to I guess see uh, in those two games. Do you do you feel the team did enough? What do you take out of this weekend, especially seeing they went in uh, struggling somewhat, even albeit the four and zero record? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it, it was impressive. I mean, they they had really played pr pretty terrible the first four games of the season, uh, so it was impressive to come out and beat. Uh, you know, big a big Big Ten team and ACC team. Uh, you know, uh, but, you know they're still clearly not uh, where they need to be. They they kind of sneak by both teams, and mm -hmm. neither of those teams are you know bona fide uh, you know title contenders or, yeah. or anything like that. So uh, I I, th I think that uh, they still have quite a bit to go. But yeah. you know, I, I like to. It has to be encouraging yeah. for Beheim to to see what what he saw there. Yeah, I I think it's definitely encouraging, Brett, because you know just tr from being down th down there at the boardwalk hall. They, what, what really happened with this team, they weren't playing per se a Michigan State like they're going to play in Madison Square Garden, like a true all-around test. But what Michigan brought to the table was a team that worked the ball around the perimeter well, um, you know, attacked gaps well in the 2-3 zone, rebounded well with those gaps after shots offensively in the 2-3 zone. And it just showed Syracuse a little bit more of a team that, that can really take advantage of that in a slow-paced game. And SU was able to edge them in that, and it was, le it was a lesson learned. And then with the Georgia Tech game, you obviously have a sharp shooting guy like Brian Oliver, um, who's you know who's pretty much just shooting holes into into that zone. And it was just a test of kind of trying to wear him out, get to a certain point where they could explode. And that's what they did there with that late run in the second half. Um, I, just I, what's your take on uh, I guess all of that? Yeah, I mean I think defensively what you said you know rings true, and I think offensively uh, this weekend proved two things with with each of the games. I think Friday. We saw that you know if if SU needs him, that Chris Joseph can step up and be the guy that Jim Beheim kind of envisioned all along um, going into the season, mm -hmm. and he can step up and he can kind of will his team to victory. And, you know that came with all the all, all the other stuff that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday night against Georgia Tech, it showed that you know when Chris Joseph is on the bench in foul trouble, that other guys can step up. And they were really ten deep in that game, like Beheim said at the start of the season, and. Found it kind of hard to believe, but here we are against Georgia Tech, and he's playing ten guys, and and pretty much all of them, except Thad Mello, are, are contributing. So yeah, um, it, it, it's a good sign for for them offensively in, in those two senses. Yeah, you touched on an, an array of items there, and uh, the one thing that I think sticks out is Chris Joseph being that go-to guy. It was interesting talking to Chris after the game. The one thing that he was steadfast with was the fact that he feels his team is different, and the fact that they don't need a go-to guy. He truly feels that way. They won't have a go-to guy. Perhaps he's saying that because he might be that go-to guy and he wants to be perhaps a little unselfish with his words. But at the same time, I think we've seen that thus far this season, that this is more so a team that Joseph is, is swearing uh, is not going to have that main player. It's going to need contributions from everybody. And the way they played in that Georgia Tech game, up and down, needing all those bodies in a very fast-paced game, that's the way this year's SU team's going to play. And he even said to me after the game, I said, Scale one to ten, where do you put this with what Coach Bayhampton's saying you guys need? And he said, honestly, I give it a ten because we got all those guys in the game. Um, we'll touch on all those guys in a little bit before we preview Cornell, but MVP of the tournament was Rick Jackson. It was just, I, I, you know, I asked Rick there this weekend, was it a surprise to you that you got the award, seeing that Chris got 19, 20 points? He said, you know, no, 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 it wasn't a surprise at all. But, you know, there he was, two double-doubles, 26 total rebounds, um, and he was pretty confident that um, he was, I guess, the best player there all weekend. What did you see out of, out of Rick, I guess, this weekend and his performance and his role thus far? You know, he really has been getting it done inside, both defensively and, and on the boards. You know, and that's one of the things that Beheim said recently is that he knew that one of the things that Rick could really do this year was to rebound the basketball well, and that could kind of be his staple. 
and obviously you know he's not going to be the leading scorer this year for for Syracuse, uh, although he has been able to to score the basketball pretty well. But you know, defense and rebounding is really something he's able to do. And, you know, that's something that Syracuse needs right now. They have guys who can score. Uh, they need someone who can get in there and, and play like he has. And I think right now, early on, he he arguably has been the, the MVP of the team so far. Yeah, you know, he he's been the rock so far. He, you know, he's he's played 40 minutes in two games. He's played 30 minutes in all of the games, and he just he's a rebounding machine. And and he's kind of the one, I think, constant for SU so far this season. You know, he's going to go out and pretty much post a double double. He has five double doubles in in six games. So, um, I, and I think you know, where Chris Joseph has kind of been inconsistent at times, and even Scoop Jardine, um, I think he's like 9 for 37 in the past three games, shooting uh, after that 27-point career outing against Detroit. You know, he, Rick Jackson has been that guy, that, that presence in, in, in the middle that you know is going to be there for 35-plus for minutes and grab 10-plus boards. Yeah, you mentioned him being a constant, obviously there with, with the big men that he's playing with, Fat Mel has been... Uh, I think it, it would be a fair statement to say an utter disappointment. Biggie's freshman of the year choice only played four minutes total, the first four minutes there against Michigan. By Musakita started the second half. Uh, then in, in the next game, uh, he only played seven minutes as compared to, to Bides. I think it was 26 minutes. Bide has provided good rebounding, and the coaches have been commending him, but still not a constant like Rick Jackson. So those are a few other things that, that occurred this weekend that, you know, that metal struggles are continuing. We'll see if Bide Musakita maybe gets that starting nod soon. But as we preview Cornell, just going off the constants uh, that you guys mentioned, um, something that did surface in, in, in the tournament, especially in that last game, was Deion Waiters and C.J. Fair, the two other freshmen other than by Musakita, providing good minutes. Um, uh, Fair and Waiters in, in that first half against Georgia Tech, while Joseph was on the bench, um, were the two guys keeping Eshu in the game offensively. Uh, is what Was this a coming out party for those two guys? What can we expect uh, uh, tomorrow night against Cornell? Um, and what are we going to expect for them, I guess, for the rest of out of conference play? Yeah, you know, I think that uh, we'll see a little bit of, you know, more of the same of what we have seen tomorrow against Cornell. You know, Cornell is a team that really doesn't have uh, the same, you know, athletes that they had last year, the same shooters and, and the same veterans that they had uh, a year ago. And I think that, you know, it's easy to look at Cornell and say this was a Sweet 16 team, but the team is completely different this year, a new coach and only one returning starter. We have, you know, a couple guys that are averaging more than six points a game, and that's something that I think people haven't quite, uh, you know, really discovered about Cornell yet, and I think they will. They'll, they'll see that Cornell just isn't where they were, and I think Syracuse will continue to roll. Um, I think the, the thing that impressed me most about those two guys this weekend was their confidence. Um, you know, Deion Waiters, early on, uh, when he had the hot hand, he wasn't afraid to keep pulling the trigger, and... Um, same thing with C.J. Fair uh, in the corner it was kind of a, a risky shot, I guess, with, with ten, not risky, but, you know, with 10 seconds left, and, and he pulled the trigger even though Beheim probably wanted them to, to go down three or four seconds before they took a shot. But, you know, he, he had an open look, um, and he, he took it and he made it, and that, and that was a, a big um, momentum shift for SU on, uh, on, on Saturday. So um, I think that confidence factor is what impressed me most about those two freshmen this weekend. Definitely confidence out of them too, especially confidence out of Waiters. He was there in front of a lot of his uh, family and friends from home. Um, he was the one guy, almost veteran, like gesturing to the to the crowd that was mostly Syracuse fans uh, down there at the boardwalk hall all game. Uh, he started the game four four and really had a tremendous first half. And fair even too. Uh, you know, he was talking to me after the game. And he said. You know, the, you know, what I was hearing from the Georgia Tech bench was, you know, this guy's a driver, this guy's a driver. So you mentioned the confidence. He might not be as overt as Deion Waiters, but it's definitely there when he says something like, you know, they're calling me a driver and, uh, and I wasn't afraid to take that shot. So I think that's that's something definitely out of these two players. But on to the picks tonight for Cornell. I guess what's your guys' take? How do you see it unfolding as SU returns to the carry dome? Yeah, you know, I, I just, once again, I think Syracuse will continue to roll. I think they're, they're not quite at the point where they're, uh, you know, ready to take on, you know, top ten teams and, and run neck and neck. I, I really don't think that they're there yet. I, I think that they'll roll over Cornell because I just don't think Cornell's any good. But I think that uh, they'll, you know, they'll they'll play well, and uh, you know, for their sake, hopefully, it's enough to get them ready for this weekend in Michigan State or, or NC State, and then Michigan State the following week. I, I you know, they're really 
if you're playing some tough teams at a conference, but right now I think that it doesn't really matter yeah. this one. I think it'll be another lesson learned for this team, a little bit different, but similar to the first four games the team played in the Carry Dome, where it was something a little bit different, and much in the vein of a William & Mary, where it's a smart team who's providing this, obviously, Cornell's an Ivy League school. you got a guy like Robleski kind of running the point, running the show, who's going to be able to do those things. But like you mentioned, they're missing uh, four, or seven, uh, four of the guys from last year, a seven-footer foot, you know, a number of guys. Um, that Kevin Donahue isn't the coach anymore, but still, this is a team that lost three close games to uh, three pretty good teams who are expected to win or be at the top of their kind of mid-major uh, 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 divisions. So I expect it to be actually a relatively close game, SU winning perhaps by about 10, but it'll be another good game for this young team to learn, and Cornell's going to, I think, put up a fight here, even though the record is 2-4. and four. Um, My friends, what would you take? Um, yeah, I think SU's going to pull this one out by about 20 in the end. I, I think like you, it'll be pretty close and, and as you kind of just pull away at the end there. Um, but yeah, this, this is definitely you know, a different Cornell team and, and like you guys said, I think that there will be um, more lessons learned and, and um, you know, they, SU has to kind of stay focused on the task at hand, I, I guess, and, and not look ahead to the two big games um, this weekend and early next week. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Cornell will provide somewhat of a, of a test tomorrow. Uh, but that's it for this edition of On the Beat uh, from the Daily Orange. Again, tomorrow night in the Carry Dome, 7 p.m., Cornell is going to be making the trip up from Ithaca uh, to take on number 8 Syracuse, moved up one spot this week uh, in the polls. But until then, uh, thanks again, guys, for Andrew and Brett. See ya.